All right. Thanks, everyone. Hello, I'm Stephen from Edinburgh Napier for one more day. Um, I'm not really going to talk about MConnect app. Um, really going to talk about um, our guidelines, or I should say our draft guidelines, because there's only a small project team uh, that's seen it. So in the apex of who authorizes these things, we've got the project team. And then, of course, Smug are the next on the, the, the list about who should get to see it before the rest of the university gets to see it. Um, it's kind of come about because we've got a Moodle enhancement project with a, a number of work streams. One of them is to update our theme, uh, make uh, Moodle look a little bit more funky. Um, and another part is this team's integration. Um, so while we're rolling out um, the MConnect app, we wanted to put together some guidelines because, oh, well, I'm not going to talk about Teams too much because uh, we, know, we know what Teams is about, really. Um, but we know both of them have got their strengths and weaknesses. I think they work very well together. Um, and so that's really what we're, we're going to try and highlight with these um, uh, guidelines. Again, it's, it's also a chance to kind of compare and contrast, uh, promote Moodle again and some of the, the fabulous features in Moodle. Um, but one of the other things I'm really keen to avoid is that we get a de, kind of de facto migration away from Moodle and, um, and into Teams. So that's kind of one of the other reasons. So, um, okay, let's, uh, let, let's get started then. So, okay, just on the MConnect app side of things, if you haven't seen it, um, this, is, this is what it looks like. Essentially, it just allows, it's just an app that sits in Teams and it recognizes your Moodle roles. And if you're a teacher or a non editing teacher, then it gives you your list of your modules uh, or your courses and you click create team. And that will create uh, a team based around that Moodle, that, that code. And um, uh, what else to do? Really, all it's doing for us is, is synchronizing members. Um, so it, it looks at who's in your Moodle participants and then just creates them in the Moodle team and kind of keeps them uh, synchronized. You can do other things. You, know, you have to define a little template. We've got a very simple one. All it's doing is this membership thing, but you can do other things such as create topics or, or channels based on topics. Um, you've got a whole load of permissions and stuff uh, as well, but we're keeping it uh, a pretty simple. So you just you, you, people just uh, click the standard template and then that gives you uh, your team. It's not the only way that you can integrate Moodle with Teams. You know, we were looking at um, using the school data sync, which is, uh, uh, you know, kind of Microsoft's thing. So, so long as you've got a database of courses with members, then you, know, you could write your own custom thing to do that. You don't need to buy this um, app from Schooler, but uh, just with our time resource issues and so on, we've just decided to go with, with MConnect app. So, um, that's really all I want to say about the MConnect app itself. Uh, you can go to the website and get a much better explanation than I've just given you. I think the, the key thing for me is when you've got these two app, uh, platforms uh, running in parallel, you know, we need to keep uh, students orientated. And as I say, I want to avoid this kind of uh, any migration to say, well, I'm, not, I'm just all I'm going to use Moodle for is a single link into my team. So I really like the image on the left, which is Moodle is the master. It is our established learning and teaching platform developed over many years, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's just then provided, it's being augmented by Teams. There's a link then. On the right-hand side, here we're seeing Moodle um, as a tab within the team. And, and I don't like that kind of symbolically as well, because it's it's almost like means uh, Teams is, is subsuming Moodle within there, and it's not the right way around. So the, symbolically, I don't like the image on the right, but also from a practical point of view, because we want students to come to the Moodle dashboard and make sure that they're getting the notifications, uh, the alerts that you get, you know, from your your course list. There, we don't really want them going straight into Teams and then finding Moodle from there. So that that's partly what um, uh, this is about. So image on the left is the one I like. It's got Mo Moodle as primacy. And, uh, and Teams as, a, as, a, as an augmented uh, part of that. Okay, so when we're thinking about Moodle and Teams as well, when we're putting these guidelines um, together, um, I should have said actually that uh, that MConnect app is gonna be available for any member of staff. Um, so anyone, can, anyone can, create the, uh, can create their team. So that's hence the guidelines are to go with it. So. Um, we also want to then, just to get people to think a little bit about what they're going to use Moodle and Teams for and how these are going to run in parallel together. Now, I'm 
shamelessly plagiarising an excellent video and a blog post by Jonathan Tuller from the University of East London. Um, if you've not seen his video on the affordances of Moodle and Teams, really go and have a look at it. It's, it's a really well put together video and a really nice blog post as well. So what he's broadly speaking when he's saying that Moodle is kind of more suited or well, well suited to sequential and you know, asynchronous learning modalities. You know, it's got well established resources and activities that students kind of progress through in a specific order, generally on their own, not exclusively, of course. We know you could use Moodle um, in it, more than just that, but, you know, it's, it lends itself well to that. Um, and Moodle, is, it, it tends to be a kind of week one to week 12 or whatever your week type progression, and there's topics, you know, uh, according to that. I know you, you don't have to use it like that, but, but in the main, it's used from that. So it's got this very kind of linear layout and provides students you know, with tracking completion tools and so on, so that they're, you know, they keep themselves orientated. And of course, embedded within that, you've got various activities uh, and assessment is a big part of that. And I'll, I'll kind of come to that. So broadly speaking, that's um, what, what uh, Jonathan was um, um, talking about. Then when we, when we think about Teams, again, broadly speaking, Teams is, you know, it's well suited to more the, the continuous and the synchronous, the live uh, learning modality. And again, not exclusively, of course, you can use class notebooks and so on and lay things out very linearly and have the tracking, et cetera, et cetera. But in the main, certainly within education, people are using it probably probably more for that uh, continuous and synchronous. Um, it's all centered around the chat and discussion tools, you know, and the different uh, channels as well. And, you know, as we know, students can collaborate in documents, et cetera, et cetera. Brilliant for group work. And I think that's really the main thrust that we are promoting um, teams uh, this this kind of dual platform for and of course you've got your live teaching events and content sharing etc cetera, etc cetera. i think this is all very familiar to folks i don't really need to dwell on that but i i really like the way that he was um just talking about these two different learning modalities um and how they might work together just taking that a little bit further then um he talks a little bit about the abc learning design I'm also a little shout out to Dublin City University. They've put a, a very nice uh, free resource. They, they issue lots of free stuff. They're a fantastic set of people uh, called ABC to VLE. It's an online kind of version of that ABC learning design, you know, that curriculum planning um, idea. So Jonathan is, is taking it a little bit further then and, and getting folks to think about Moodle and Teams in terms of, you know, the Laurel Lard's you know, different uh, activities types. So you know, Moodle's strength is obviously in the provision of resources, so that's going to lend itself well to that kind of acquisition of knowledge. Also, the investigating type of um, learning activity, you know, where you're comparing and contrasting resources, you know, etc. Um, whereas Teams, of course, is uh, really geared around the communication, um, so that's around the discussion uh, type learning activities, you know, where you're responding to ideas and uh, and questions, and by extension, then the collaborative uh, nature of working, uh, you know, in a team or in a group, you know, that kind of thing. So you can see how those two, um, or how the two platforms support those uh, particular learning activity types. When we look at things like the the, the practice activity type, you know, that's really about um, you know, kind of changing your behavior based on feedback, changing your actions based on feedback. And depending where the feedback's coming from, it could come from Moodle, uh, it could come from peers and teams, you know, that that you know can arguably be used in both. And um, then production really is about de demonstrating your understanding in some way. So, you know, that could be an assignment submission, it could be a live presentation, and so on. So you can, you know, arguably you know, that learning type would, you know, could sit between the, 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 the two. I just thought that it was um, a really good way of getting academics to think about um, the two platforms and how to get the best of it. So, you know, we make reference to that in the, um, in the guides. Uh, all right. So putting the guidelines together as well, get a little bit of feedback from some of the early adopters. Um, there's been a few few folk using, few enthusiasts and uh, over the last year, and they have to be enthusiasts because they have to enroll members in their team manually. And you know what it's like putting people in. You have to, you know, you can't do a cut and paste from a spreadsheet or not easily anyway, not that I know of. Um, so they've had to really kind of battle with the, the membership side of things to get to get it working. So I was asking them, give us a, a little bit of feedback um, around 
you know, how are you using the tools in both these platforms, you know, with particular reference to your know, communicating with students, providing files, scheduling and recording meetings, supporting group work, assessment, keeping students orientated. So, you know, I incorporated these approaches into the guidelines and really four kind of themes really began to emerge, for the guidelines where, you know, partly it's about, you know, really you should be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that, but also trying to kind of articulate what platform is best for what and just keeping in mind that uh, we need to keep students orientated when we're beginning to use these two platforms. So if we think about communication, we know all about Moodle forums, well organized around message threads, easy to track, um, easy to search uh, for messages. But then think about Teams and that big long scrolling screen. I mean, who would have thought that uh, it used to be said that you know, Moodle was the scroll of death. I think a Teams is the scroll of death now because you can imagine, you know, coming in, let's say you're late to um, you know, your course and you're in week three and you've got that big, long scrolling uh, set of messages. It's very difficult really to keep track of what's being said and uh, what's being shared. So what we've been saying is continue to use the, the Moodle News Forum. We, we, we've rebadged the announcements, but it's just the, the, that one-way messaging system um, because it keeps all the teachers' posts in a very easy to navigate list. It's not very good in our installation for urgent messaging because our default um, notification from forums is a digest that gets set, sent in the evening. So we're saying, well, if you really need something urgent, then you know, perhaps post that into Teams as well. But you know, keep using that, that Moodle News Forum. It's very well organized and, and it really helps students to uh, kind of get on board quickly, particularly if they're late. Um, you know, as we know, the forums are great for scanning for topics. So really good for, you know, you know module queries for students to answer each other and, you know, be able to get, uh, get support from each other. And you might be using uh, forums for kind of longer posts as well, where perhaps things are going to be graded, perhaps you need more academic style, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, continue to really use forums for that. Uh, we do have folks who use um, Moodle for emailing students. So we've got quick mail, and I know you can use participants as well, you know, just for sending really simple messages to, to individuals um, or groups. So urgent messaging, you know, we're saying that's very effective in Teams. So those were the kind of main things that we were, um, that I've been promoting really in terms of uh, uh, communication. We have a look at uh, uh, assessment. Um, this is where we're beginning to do the thou shalt not. And, and the main thing is that anything that's summative assessment needs to be submitted to Moodle so that we have a copy on our servers. So even if we're using Turnitin, we've written a, a little utility at Napier whereby um, when a paper is submitted to Turnitin, a copy is kind of pulled out and uh, kept in a, a repository that just our developers uh, have access to. So it's really important for assessment for us that we have copies on premise. Um, so, you know, we're able to say that's, that, you know, it's a firm uh, kind of guideline there. Um, Obviously, live activities uh, or live um, uh, your presentations can take place in Teams, and uh, you know students might be getting verbal and text, uh, you know, based feedback immediately there. So you know we're asking our academics, you know, have a think about well, how are how are students going to access that feedback later on? Where where are you going to put it? Um, you know, do they have to go back into the chat or or so on? Is it is it easy to find amongst the other feedback for that particular module? We've got Moodle minimum standards. They're not very prescriptive. They're very much about um, signposting, just how to structure things well. You know, make sure your your files are well well named, um, that uh, your your sections are well named, and it's just aids scanning. You know, the only thing we kind of really mandate is make sure that there's an assessment and feedback section or something similarly titled, and that's where students are going to expect to find you know their assessment briefs. Um, and, and other information, you know, their, their submission points and so on. So we want to really make sure that students are staying orientated um, around assessment. I mean, obviously, teams, in terms of formative assessment, there's some nice tools in there around forms and assignments and class notebooks. Uh, we're not trying to dissuade people from uh, using teams uh, for formative assessments. You know, we would just say that, well, Moodle's tools are just uh, so well developed uh, they're better than Teams, and uh, you know it's going to give you a wider set of options. But you know there are some neat things you can do. Um, great for forms and uh, combining forms with assignments, and you know you can keep track of uh, who's completed what and so on. 
but really, we would argue that uh, you know Moodle is, a, is has got some fantastic um, assessment, grading, and feedback tools. So you know, let's keep let's keep using those. In terms of files um, and documents, again, Moodle very well established tools for for organizing files, library resources, videos, you know, all the, the usual kind of things. And these, again, we're referencing in our minimum standards about how to structure these things well. Also, Moodle's got the, the tools for importing content, you know, from one course into another. There's not really an equivalent in Teams for that roll forward type of function. So, you know, we're, we, we've got a firm guideline of, around Moodle continuing to be the, the main location for general module learning materials. Um, obviously, you've, you'll have group work taking place. And if you've got channels in there, the channels will have a files uh, folder there. Um, so they're generally going to be student-owned files or student-created files. I mean, potentially, you know, you might have templates that you want the students to complete and you might put them in their uh, channel files, you know, possibly. In, but we would say, well, if you're going to, if there are files like that in Teams, go and put a link back into Moodle, link it back into the assessment section in Moodle so students can, can find it. And again, just to bang on the, the, the point around anything that's created in Teams that has to be assessed, well, that needs to be downloaded and uh, can be submitted um, to Moodle. Um, and the last of the four things then, this is kind of the last slide then, is just about live teaching events. And um, this has been changing quite a bit um, over the last uh, little while. So it seems to have settled down now to, to an extent. We know that um, if you want um, invitations to appear in students' Outlook calendars, then you know have a team and schedule the meeting within that team channel. And that gets the invitations into everyone's uh, Outlook. It was a reminder also to staff that it's only the scheduled teams, or sorry, the scheduled meetings, I should say, that generate a transcript. So you know, your ad hoc meet now type of meetings don't generate a transcript. And we've got kind of a whole load of guidelines around, you know, you must have a transcript. Um, we've also got the usual thing around setting expectations about um, recordings and so on, um, you know, when they're going to be available, where to get them, um, you know, reminding people that recording's about to start. Um, you know, the purpose of it, who's going to have access. We're trying to alleviate concerns, aren't we, about, around privacy and, um, you know, trying to encourage participation by reissuing students. So, I mean, it's just the usual thing around recording. There's nothing nothing new about that, but, you know, you, you do need to kind of remind people just not to assume that you can just go in and just start recording. Um, a firm action out of this was um, not to upload MP4s into Moodle. Now, we've had uh, awful problems over the last uh, couple of years with MP4 files. Whenever you know a couple of students were trying to view an MP4 file at the same time that's been uploaded directly into Moodle, it was really pulling the server down. Um, so we've had to send out lots of comms and doing lots of whack-a-mole type uh, um trying to find which which is the module uh, that, that, that the students are using and then trying to download those videos put them up to a video server it's been it's been a real pain so you know there's a message there about don't put your mp4s into moodle now hopefully we're not going to need to do anything like that with with teams because they from my understanding that any recording that takes place in teams is going to have a, a, a duration associated with it so I think the duration will be 30 days, or you can set this at a site level anyway. So I think we're going to set it at 30 days, and it's going to sit within the um, the files um, area for that team. So there'll be no need to move it. So long as it's scheduled, it's going to have the transcript as well. Um, so that's my understanding. I don't think it's uh, actually happened yet, but we're hoping that uh, also that the, the, the team or the meeting scheduler will be able to kind of extend that um, Expiration, expiration, that is the right word, expiration period and so on. So they don't have to upload these recordings into Moodle. Um, you know, we do have some other video servers uh, available. Again, transcripts is, is a big thing for us. So if for some reason, you know, perhaps they didn't schedule within the team channel and it was just an ad hoc meeting and of course it doesn't generate a transcript, then you could upload it to, you know, one of our video servers. We've got Media we use using Panopto and, and Stream as well. Um, and that will generate the transcript. Although I found that uh, uploading into stream and trying to get it linked to a channel, I, I didn't find it the easiest thing uh, in the world. So that was really what the, the guidelines are about. Just for those who have um, <laughs> come in late 
we're rolling out the MConnect app to allow academics to um, create teams without asking for them. Um, but we want them to think a little bit about what is the best way of using these two platforms. We don't want to get rid of Moodle. Moodle is the primary learning environment for us. Teams is a, is a, a business productivity uh, platform, which you know is being used a lot in education, uh, but it's not going to replace Moodle. I mean, Moodle's too good. So I think I'll uh, just stop there. There's a few um, links. Uh, go and have a look at Jonathan's uh, video and his blog post. It's, it's really excellent. A um, little bit about Laurel Lard's activity types. And check out DCUs. If you're ever doing any of those ABC type curriculum planning workshops with folks, then uh, check out the resources from DCU uh, for doing it online. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty good stuff. So I'll stop there, Kenji. And uh, over to you.